Good afternoon everyone, welcome to another set of videos in which we will create a purchase quote and transfer that into a purchase order and at some point uh, in the video, the following videos, I will show you how you can process a purchase order and uh, along with that, uh, like a full-on end-to-end process would include a vendor payment so when we purchase items, we obviously need to make a payment to the uh, vendor in this case we will create a purchase code we will skip the approval process so I will also explain how you can actually configure things like that and what your clients would require in terms of creating a purchase code and sending it out for an approval and then uh, once you get an approval you can create a purchase order out of that so let's first go and uh, create a purchase code so I am in the business manager role so as you can see I have a lot of uh, highlights and actions that I can do as a shortcut but normally if you don't have this available you're in a different role you simply need to go to purchasing and click on purchase codes so I have created a purchase code already uh, just to accelerate this process of creating a purchase code uh, for the demo purposes so I'll just simply open the purchase code and I will walk you through a few of the fields that you would need to know so let's go show more here. Uh, the very first thing that you're going to realize when you create a purchase code is uh, this whole uh, window would be uh, empty and the status would be open. So that's one of the key things that we need to know in order for you to modify this purchase code. And even if it gets uh, declined uh, from an approval process, the status has to open. So when we release it, uh, the, we'll, you'll see the status will change to released. And if you want to modify it, then you need to reopen it by simply going uh, to release and you just do reopen. So uh, skipping that for now, we will, you will have to create a vendor or you'll have to pick a vendor basically. Uh, in this case, I have picked first up consultants, the address and country and everything gets automatically populated. The contact information that is configured for this vendor has been um, populated, auto populated in this field. So the document date, due date, order date, these are the pre-filled um, fields based on the configuration that is being done uh, for your client. And uh, one of the things that you, that one of your client also would like, and I know my client has requested for me to enable is the purchaser code. So you have um, individuals who would be purchasing, so they will be configured based on their names. So whoever is creating this purchase code, uh, they will, they will have to fill this purchase purchaser code just for audit purposes and making sure that everybody is in line with the best practices uh, for the, their business. Uh, similar to assign user ID, so you can assign a user ID. In my in my case, I can assign it to myself, uh, but at the moment, uh, I don't think I have configured it uh, as a mandatory field. Moving on to the actual purchase code lines. So in this, you can select different types. Uh, you can have resources, you can have fixed assets, you can even do GL accounts if you like to. Uh, in our case, we will do an item. Uh, we will try to purchase the item uh, from this particular vendor. But you can um, look into different um, types that are available, play around with it for your own dem demonstration purposes. And in the long run, if you want to actually take the time to get the Certification, you know, it's always good to know these things because the, well, about 30% or 35% of the exam covers how you can process this business operations from business center point of view. Uh, so uh, I will simply delete this line just in case it doesn't cause any problems. So I've created the item. I'm going to purchase this item. The quantity is one. Uh, I'm not going to specify the location. Uh, in this case, when you can make the location code mandatory as well, so when you create a purchase code, if your client wants you to make sure that the location is specified where this will be being received, then you know you will not be able to make the code into an order until you specify a location. And uh, you can also override the price for the unit cost but it has been automatically populated. So in this case, I will leave it as is and no dimensions whatsoever at this point. Uh, going down in a bit more detail, uh, just to discuss what the 
what some some of the fields that you should be uh, configuring and uh, demonstrating it to your clients when it comes to creating purchase codes. Uh, payment terms code uh, usually configured. Uh, there there's a formula that you can put in. Uh, there's payment method code as well associated uh, with these vendors when it comes to invoicing and the payment discount percentages. So there's a line discount and there's an invoice discount. So maybe you want to look into what are they look like and how they can be applicable to the items. Uh, if anything, I can create another video for that and to show how uh, we can use the payment discounts and even when you go into the purchase and payable setup, you have to enable the discounts there as well. So both of them are linked together. Uh, when we come down to shipping and payment, so this is the um, ship to address. So this is the company address that would be in the company information. Uh, but if you want to change the address, you can definitely do a custom address or pick a location where you would like uh, this shipment to go to. And uh, when it comes to pay to, so these are the vendor. So if, for instance, you have uh, you're buying from one vendor, but they would like you to pay uh, another another vendor or another entity, sort of a thing. Uh, there are all sorts of complicated relationships between within an organization. You can at least change that here. So you can uh, create another vendor where the payment would be taking place, or um, you can leave it as default at this. So with that, um, I'm going to first release it. So you always have to release the document uh, before you can um, uh, create a purchase order out of it. Uh, in this case, request you can always send it for request and approval, but the approval process hasn't been in place. So that's something that I can also create a video for and then I can place that approval workflow and then we can discuss the purchase code, the approval process and creating the um, purchase order at some point. So let's just release the document. So now you see the status has been released. And at this point, when we receive the approval back, I can create a purchase order out of it. So everything, if everything looks good, uh, everybody agrees with it, the management agrees with it, that this purchase code is good, then we will simply create a process actually and then create an order out of it. So now it's asking, do you want to convert this code into an order? Yes, we do. And now the code has been converted to an order number 10613. So either we can open this order or we can go into the purchase order and then we, we can view this. And from there, we can uh, go in and see how many of these items we want to invoice and how many we want to create the receipt for it. And there's a lot more detail uh, coming up for that. So I hope that you enjoyed the uh, video. Uh, leave me a comment on a specific uh, process that you would like to learn about more and um, I will try to make the video of that.